Hello, this is a quick look at the Autovox D1 Full HD dash camera. This is a nice little dash camera, doesn't feel too premium in the hand, it's quite plastic. Measures 11cm across, so it's quite a, a wide camera, but the profile is quite slim. It has these buttons on the back for menu select, but unfortunately they're not, they're not uh, white, they don't have white text on, so they're actually a little bit tricky to see uh, as to what the button actually does. Once you get the hang of it though, it's quite easy to test up, put a date and time in, and you've got a really wide angle lens, so that's, that's really good. So if I just compare that to my camera that I'm recording this on, you see the rule goes out of shot on my camera much sooner than it does on the DVR. There's a port on the top for an optional GPS module, and there's an LED light on the front, which isn't something I've seen on a dash cam before. I'd have thought that just reflects off your screen, but it's there if you want it. You can take photos with this, and it does have a zoom function. The zoom function, though, is a digital zoom, and so you could find this looking quite grainy if you are zooming in. You can see it goes quite grainy on the screen. If you want to review footage or photos on the unit, you can do that directly. It's got the uh, capacity to do that straight on the screen, or you can view them on your PC or out via HDMI. And it's really nice to see that this comes with a 32 gig card. So you, this comes preloaded, and so this is ready to use. All you have to do is uh, just install this on, in your car, and you're good to go. To help with that, it comes with this suction mount, very easy to use, just suck straight onto your windscreen. It comes with a really nice long power cable, so this plugs into your car's power unit. It comes with a USB cable to allow you to connect this to your PC or laptop so you can get the footage off. And in, in a first, I've not seen this before either, it also comes with these fitting units. So these help mount this uh, onto your windscreen and keep the wire out of the way. Otherwise, you can sometimes end up with a wire dangling all over the place. Now, I have to say the footage from this is very good. What you can hear in the background is the sound recorded by the camera as I'm driving along. So there wasn't too much going on there, but as I'm sure you can imagine, if there was a large crash or a bump of some sort, the camera would pick that up on the microphone. So here we are driving in snow, and again, the visibility wasn't great for me as a driver, but in the immediate area, the camera's picking everything up, and, and you can see the wide-angle lens is really doing a great job here of capturing all three lanes. So here we are in more of a residential street rather than a motorway. You can see the number plate in front is really clear, as is the number plate of the car to my left that's just pulling away. Really nice, crisp image. Now there's a feature I haven't been able to test and that's the built-in G sensor that apparently will record sudden course changes or impacts. And I haven't had to try that because I haven't crashed and I haven't had to swerve out of the way, fortunately, but apparently it does come with that. If that does detect some sort of impact, it should lock the video file and prevent that from being overwrited. Otherwise, what will happen is I'm recording all this footage. When the memory card eventually becomes full up, it will start to re-record over the oldest footage. You don't have to worry about clearing out the memory card. You do just need to pull files off if you do want to save them for long-term use. So overall, this has been a, a good little camera. It isn't the most expensive camera I've tried, and that's reflected in the build quality. It's very plastic, but actually the footage that you get, as you can see here, is very good. I hope you found this short review useful. Thanks for watching.